hey, just before this video starts properly, um, I'd like to ask you to do a bit of a favour, which is to check out another LEGO YouTube channel, which is High Tea Toys. It's nothing to do with me, just one that I've enjoyed watching over the past three or four years. So it's run by Johanna, a Dutch girl who lives in the UK, and she's done some awesome work with some small city layouts, some constrained space, also some really nice mocks and stuff like that, and some good reviews of some Harry Potter sets and things like that. Uh, but she's actually having a really tough time of it. She's actually just been diagnosed with a tumour in her head. Uh, she just released a video about it. Um, she's having to have surgery in early January, just 29 years old, so, you know, really scary stuff. But a channel that's really worth checking out. And obviously we all hope that, you know, things go better for her, you know, in the coming year and surgery's really successful. But like I say, I will leave a link in the comments below and also I will uh, post a link just up here to what I think is one of her really good videos of that con kind of constrained city layout. But anyway, let's get on to this video, uh, which is going to be a bit of a city and uh, channel update here. Hello and welcome to Base Plate Reviews. Today we're going to go over just three things, which is what I picked out over the last few weeks with Black Friday and double points, etc. So I made a handful of purchases. Also, what my kind of future plans are. So I've been doing a bit of work with Bricklink Studio and a bit of parts ordering for an upcoming project. And also, uh, we will actually get to the city and we're going to do some work on that, which is actually extending the monorail which is on the city of lanterns so it goes around the chinatown section of the city we'll actually get that done today and you can join me we'll do a bit of work on it coming up okay so as you might see i, I did purchase a few speed champion sets over black friday weekend and black friday week so i managed to pick up the lamborghini countach the 1970s ferrari picked up four of those and also four of the Porsche 963s, all for half price. I think these are all coming up to retirement this year and at half price it was pretty tempting. Uh, I don't know whether I'll build any of these, might build one and then potentially sell the others in the future, but at half price just 15 Canadian dollars rather than 30. Uh, it was just too much of a tempter for me. Um, on top of that, it actually reminded me that I had this one in my build pile. So I've just uh, built the McLaren 2023 car. Uh, so really nice one. And there will be a review of that coming up on the channel next. So that should be the next video. Separately to that, in terms of Black Friday and the deals and stuff, just one other purchase, which was this Star Wars one. So 75379, which is the R2-D2. And this is the one which is the 25th anniversary of Lego Star Wars and comes with the exclusive Darth Malak minifigure. So uh, a character that just appeared in Knights of the Old Republic, a classic game in the early 2000s. And uh, just by itself, that minifigure goes for about 55 Canadian dollars on eBay. I managed to pick this set up from Costco for just 84 Canadian dollars total. So the entire set, brand new, sealed. Uh, this set's become a bit more popular now that the C3PO uh, set came out and this actually pairs up really nicely with that in terms of the size. So I think this will be a really nice investment piece. Like I say, I'm pretty sure I could flip it now for more than I paid for it, uh, considering the minifigures were $54 by itself. But yeah, those are my purchases for kind of Black Friday. Uh, separate to that, I have done a bit of parts ordering. So just moving this set around, which is the Castle bed and breakfast, the friend's castle bed and breakfast, and a part became available on the parts ordering, which is actually this turret piece. So these were previously available in bright red and a green color. So originally came out with the Super Mario sets, uh, but actually it's come out in this color as well now. So it should allow me to enclose this, because if we spin it around, we can see that, you know, quite thin, not too bad, but a bit thin, but I should now be able to enclose it because I've got that piece and uh, just bulk it out a little bit. So I've done a bit of parts ordering there, ordered some more of the kind of flesh coloured windows, more of the uh, tile pieces for the roofs. So 
that'll be a project coming up probably in late January early February just because the parts take so long to come and uh, because I did a parts order I did qualify for a GWP but I'll show you that uh, on the screen now. So I actually did a parts order this weekend with the double points and it qualified me for this ballerina and nutcracker scene which I thought was a really nice GWP. As far as I'm aware I shouldn't have qualified for it so with a parts order it does need to be in the bestseller to count towards uh, the amount that you need and it here in Canada it was $195. If I go to my order just here you'll see that in terms of bestseller parts I only ordered $175 and then $40 of uh, the uh, regular parts that take a lot longer to come. Uh, so shouldn't have qualified me, even though 215 total, only 175 on the bestseller. And it wasn't because I'd added in this tic-tac-toe uh, rewards, uh, which has a notional value of $27, because I hadn't actually added that in when it said that I'd qualified for the GWP. So that was a nice uh, bonus for me. So I actually used 24 of my uh, Insiders Rewards dollars, so 2,400 points uh, to get this tic-tac-toe one. Uh, that should be being sent along with the Ballerina Nutcracker scene already. Uh, this uh, tic-tac-toe set goes for about 50 Canadian dollars, maybe a little bit more if we look at it on eBay here. Uh, so I think, you know, again, another nice one. It's not one that I'm intending to build or anything. Obviously, pretty uh, desirable because people want to get all of those uh, astronaut figures. So five of the white ones, five of the orange ones. Yeah, really nice. In terms of the parts that I ordered, obviously, like I say, for the Lego Friends Castle Bed and Breakfast, but I've also been doing a bit of a project on Bricklink Studio, which is this one. And it's actually a launderette. Uh, so I've just done the ground floor. Um, I'm not sure what I'll put above it, and I need to think of how I'll do a roof. But yeah, I've done this launderette, and we can actually see some rendered images of it as well if I go to uh, Bricklink Studio Gallery. So just here, should be able to see these kind of rendered images. Uh, so I've posted up there. I will include the link to this in the comments uh, or the description down below. Uh, really really nice first time i've used studio so uh really been enjoying it i know this isn't super complex or anything like that but i think it's pretty effective i'm very happy with it uh just learning how to use the uh system and the great thing with this is once you build something you can choose it just to include parts which are available in the catalog now you can actually export that catalog of parts in a csv file and upload it to lego.com and it will tell you what parts are available, which ones aren't. And then you can actually put your parts order in uh, using that. But yeah, this will be an upcoming project uh, in the new year. Okay, so that's enough talking about what I'm going to do in the future. Let's uh, talk about what we're going to do right now. So what I want to do is extend this monorail out further. So rather than just being around the City of Lanterns, I want this to come out all up to... I think about here, about midway through where the family reunion uh, Lunar New Year set is, the Chinese restaurant. It's going to mean moving some of these uh, lanterns, stuff like that. Uh, I might move this back a tiny bit further. I also want to get this raised up just a couple of bricks or so, uh, so it'll be a little bit higher. I have got the parts, so just down here we have got the roller coaster track I've got some 2x2 two two bricks got some other bricks just there I might need to transfer the City of Lanterns from the plate that it sits on at the moment onto a more rectangular plate but it shouldn't be a problem and that'll just sit just raised up a little bit above the rest of the Chinatown obviously first things first I'm going to get all of these things out of the way I'm going to get City of Lanterns moved uh, over to the build table and get that transferred over to some other plates probably and uh, with some bricks underneath it. Okay to give you a bit of an idea about just how much we're going to extend this track it's currently there um, I will use these curved pieces I'll reuse those to complete the circuit but at the other end but this is the amount of coaster track that I've purchased so it comes all the way 
back here where these straight elements are are where we'll use those curves and then it will go all the way back and over to there. So going to be pretty big extension to the monorail and I think that means it will serve pretty much the whole of the Chinatown. So once I've removed all the modules which are sat over here plus the actual train just there uh, this actually looks really kind of bare bones. You can see it's a, basically just a frame for the modules to sit in. I've also just taken apart or taken off to the side these bits which are on the angled plates. So those are going to need to be basically taken off of there and put onto some rectangular plates. Same on this side. Uh, with this one you'd think all I have to do is raise it up but actually I want to get rid of these struts. So the supports and the struts there because they're not going to be supporting anything. The track isn't going to go there at all so they can come out completely so a little bit of work to do and then should be able to get this all raised up properly okay so that's all done all raised up and squared off just there it was somewhat trickier than it first seemed because everything was actually locked in place with these two 1x16 technic bricks so they were actually going down right through the center of the build just there and so actually required quite a bit of taking apart. Uh, what this does allow me to do, because we'll have the coaster track coming out like this, so doesn't need supports here, but also doesn't need them here. So I actually can just remove these. And it means that instead of the City of Lanterns bottom half kind of being obscured quite a bit by the monorail track coming around and all the struts and supports for it this is actually could be much more opened up so I'm actually really pleased that I've done this but I'm going to get it placed in the city and then I have to start building the supports for these rails because uh, I definitely can't have a large expanse of it just sitting unsupported. Okay so that's the City of Lanterns placed back in there minus the modules on it's now squared off kind of raised platform just raise a tiny bit I say minus the modules I've got the bubble T one on there but minus all of the other ones and that's just to make it easier to get this in place and get the rail placed so this is the total length of the rail I've actually made it a bit smaller than originally had it so taking those two small pieces of roller coaster track out uh, it's going to come up to about about there these are all the struts that I've got built for it. So I'm going to get them in place. Uh, should be just the other side of the pavement, the sidewalk. So it's going to mean that any buildings that are here or here need to be set back a little bit more than I've got the modified noodle shop just there. That's right up against the sidewalk. But in general, most of them are going to need to be about four or five studs back but I'll get this placed and we'll see what it looks like and behold we have our raised monorail so all the way up to here I think that's absolutely fine in terms of the size of it probably can't pick it up on the camera too well but it isn't as flat as I'd like it and that's just the problems I've got with the continued sponginess of some of these plates so it's been built on the IKEA boxes and the the lids of them are just uh, sinking a tiny bit in places. Uh, you can probably see it a bit better if I move this around. Just hmm, maybe it isn't picking it up on the camera too well. But as it goes downhill here a little bit and tiny bit kind of raised just at this section here. Everything is all technically at the same level, the same number of bricks same number of plates but yeah not perfect obviously it's looking a bit ugly at the moment so we need to get those modules placed back in plus I'm going to get a couple of those strings of lanterns placed down inside the loop here and I'll get the road plate replaced and we should have it looking pretty close to finished and there we go with it all back and populated what I've done is I've also added the cobbled road and a bit of an entrance way up to the City of Lanterns. So what I like about this is that actually before with the 
rail, the raised rail, right in front of here. It was actually pretty difficult to see that cool uh, monkey kid kind of noodle restaurant just there. But now that's fully viewable and just opens up the city of Lanterns actually. Now you can see what I mean about having to set back the buildings away from this. So we're actually using up quite a bit more space by having the raised railway. Uh, the way that I could have got around that is actually by raising this up even higher. So it could have gone up to above the top of the Chinese restaurant. But I think that that would basically require us doubling the height of this. And then I'm starting to look at some stability issues. Uh, the other thing I could have done is maybe done it so actually the supports sat on top of some flat roofs of buildings. And that's still a possibility. If I do that, of course, it means raising up the City of Lanterns even more. So I'd want to build some shops or something just underneath here. And then the whole thing would come up a whole level. We'd have much higher staircases going up. But yeah, overall, pretty pleased with it. It means that now I can move on to the stuff that I really enjoy doing, which should be some mock buildings. So that's the next thing to aim for. Obviously I've got that laundrette which I've already designed on Bricklink Studio. So we'll definitely be building that and also might just do some kind of a amendments to existing buildings that I've already got and uh, see if they can fit up here in the uh, Chinatown section of the city. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and uh, it's been somewhat interesting. If it has been, then please do leave a like and consider subscribing if you aren't already. And I should be doing a few more reviews of various sets coming up. Definitely that McLaren Formula One car uh, in anticipation of the uh, new F1 sets coming out next year. But with that, I'll leave you and say as ever, be good. <laughs>